Let's, Very much. Let's, let's not, hear from a let's, woman. Okay, let's, let's hear from a woman let's who's let's elected not get lost, and is sitting focus. at the table and the men don't want to hear from. Um, look, I don't think anyone around this table, probably bar us three, have an, any idea how angry out there women are. <clears> they are fuming. They are absolutely fuming and livid, and you'll see them on the streets within the next few weeks. Not demanding Tony O'Brien to go, by the way, but demanding accountability right at the heart of the Department of Health. Because how in the name of God can a minister sit over a Department of Health who didn't tell him, they didn't tell him, or didn't think it, you know, bump into him for a cup of coffee, sit beside him at a meeting, and you don't think to tell him about the case of Vicky Phelan versus the state, and Vicky Phelan versus the clinic that they outsourced the, uh, the work to. I just don't believe it. And if it is true, then he should be livid with his department officials, and he should be calling them all in and saying who did what, when, how, where, why, and out you go. Because that is the only thing that women will believe. They're not going to believe all this platitudes and scoping exercises and all the rest of it, albeit that I agree with them happening. But something immediate needs to happen. And at the end of the day, women need to believe that their health matters in this country. In all sorts of arenas, women's health has been discarded by consecutive governments and inquiries are not enough. They need a complete mindset change about how their health was dealt with and the last thing they need is their health to be outsourced to for-profit companies in another country like America. As the uh, Academy of Clinical and Laboratory Medicine said today, we need the immediate repatriation of the service to this country but we also need the immediate publication of the cervical smear audit. The government are denying that exists. Yeah. It exists and they're calling for it and they yeah. are saying it just doesn't exist. Christine, uh, yeah, I have yeah, yeah, agreed with The more I hear of, of, of this and the more things that, that are revealed on, on a, an hour by hour basis almost at this stage, it's that the root of all this is the outsourcing of women's Absolutely. health, the privatisation of women's health. Now, all around this table may agree, but let's go back to 2008 when it happened. Mm -hmm. The uh, government were warned by the master of the rotunda, no less, Sam Coulter-Smith, and by Dr David Kib Gibbons, the head of the Quality Assurance Advisory Panel for the smear testing. Do not do this because in 10 years' time, it'll come back to bite us in the bum. There will be misdiagnosis of women's, uh, women's tests. They warned them. The mantra was taken up by the then opposition health leader, uh, Dr James O'Reilly. He wailed at the government, Mary Harney, Fianna Fáil, Green government at the time, do not do this. They went ahead and did it. Two years later, or less than two years later, James Riley's in the position of the Minister for Health. He does nothing about it. He renewed After it twice. That, Leo Varadkar's in the, in, in the position of the Minister for Health. He does nothing about it. Now you have Simon Harris in the position of the Minister for Health, who has done nothing about it. And yet, they were all warned by the most professional bodies, including the Academy of Clinical and Laboratory uh, Medicine, so Medical Scientists, that this is the wrong thing to do. And they are calling for the repatriation of the service on a not-for-profit basis. I think yeah, can I, I, can I, can I just want to let as well quite interesting about that with the yeah. HSE is about, yeah. is about, yeah. is about, is yeah. about that managers. The reason, and the reason Colin, was sound. It's about can managers moving. Okay, Colin, can I let yeah. Bree Look, I, in there? Uh, people are going on about visions for the health service. I'll tell you something. If the women of Ireland get organised and come out in the streets, you'll have to really get a vision for the health service because the anger out there is palpable. We all know the name of Vicky Phelan. We know the name of Irene Teep. We will know many more names in the, in the next while. And women are just not going to stand for it. And I think that politicians will listen to that more than they listen to what we say at the health committee or what happens at leaders. They will listen to it when the anger flows onto the streets you, and it will blow. Okay. And I believe that it is the only way to solve this. I just want to ask... Channel 4 News tonight where they looked at this. Did you see it, Katie? It was yes, very interesting. It was, uh, yeah. And it showed how there was a website established at the beginning of the uh, campaign by the no side, undecided on the 8th. So people who are undecided look at mm. this. And it was liked 500 times. Now, it's since closed down. But those 500 likes have been systematically targeted by the Save the Eighth campaign and others through social media. They've been bombarded with ads and with messaging all the time. It's a bit Cambridge Analytica type uh, of messaging. And I think this gets to the heart of what's going on in the campaign because there's two very different types of campaign. The no side very much relying on the image and the messaging on the posters and all on the street, but also very much relying on an online uh, targeted you know, well-funded, lots of money poured into ads on, through Google and Facebook. Uh, Twitter aren't taking ads. 
But the yes side has been very much a movement of people knocking on doors. So you see, like, the other day there was 90 people out in Clontarf. In my area, there's 50, 60, 70 people out every night knocking on doors, talking to people. So the two very different types of campaign. So the no side are furious because their strategy is messed up now. And they're making out that this is like the elite going after well, the poor, are, innocent no's. There are just but as actually, many online yes. Um, the there there is. point is that the no side are furious that they've been shut down because that's their strategy. It's the online advertising yeah, but, and but, targeting. But aren't the no, the, the no campaign entitled to, to have whatever they strategy are, unfortunately, they want? Unfortunately, we don't have a structure of legislation around online campaigning for elections or for uh, referenda. And we missed the boat because we should have had that. And th this was made by mm -hmm. the transparency campaign that the state should be, uh, you know, structuring this. It's structured around posters. And, and every poster, you have to say, who is the director of elections and who printed this poster? Online, you don't have to say who paid for it or who is uh, okay, yeah, See, I think that's the crew. And take a break. Uh, can I just get one word in? Okay, I, I do think it's problematic that words. in a referendum campaign, that misinformation is displayed at such graphic level. It's not just the graphics, it's the misinformation, the inaccuracies, the lies. That I think there's a real problem with that because we're supposed to be informing the public about our opinion on factual basis. An awful lot of non-facts are being uh, posted around the place combined with ugly images. Okay, we'll have to leave. Percent or roughly around 94% of national schools are controlled by a Catholic ethos. I think it's a very good move. It's a very positive move. And I noted that the Archbishop was quick to come out and say, oh, this is you know, the beginning of the end for Catholic schools. Um, and it's, I think that's ironic that he should be so defensive when the Catholic Church promised the divestment of the schools in order to deal with the redress issue. And they've hardly got a fraction of the, of the route down the way. And are not opposed, obviously, to people having an ethos in their schools. But when it predominates the entire state structure and system, there is a problem. So I think this is a good first step in the separation of church and state but, but isn't, in, in the relation to... But it is a disadvantage. And the, the, there's a bigger picture being missed here in all of this, to be honest with you. And that is the under Sourcing and underfunding of schools in Absolutely. general. It's about the I was in the school in Crumlin last week and I was appalled at the state of the corridors, the science lab, the, the domestic science lab, the music room, and the, the principal and the teachers struggle at fundraising on a daily basis with the parents just to put lino on a corridor of a school that was built in the 50s that's never been refurbished or properly uh, properly.